in Music City, live from the Nashville Palace. Music City Roots is on the air. Tonight, a tribute to the great state of West Virginia. And one of its favorites, the most soulful sons, Little Jimmy Dickens. Numerous members of the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame are on hand, including a legend of the Grand Ole Opry, a star from the 80s who's kept her roots in her country music her whole career, two stellar acts from West Virginia's small but impressive music scene, a veteran of the Atlantic Records era of the soul, and one of our most cherished roots and bluegrass songwriter artists. It's going to be a stellar night here in one of Music City's greatest honky talks. Check things off. Let's welcome back to our musical host. I'm so glad to see him. I missed him. He's a musical giant, ladies and gentlemen, singer, songwriter, Grammy Award winner, Jim Lauderdale. Thank you, Keith. Thank you. Ah. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? Well, I'll tell you, I do have a song prepared, unless I'm such a people pleaser, Keith wants to hear something special. Okay. All right, then I'll go ahead. I'll... Um, well, here's a song. I kind of did part of it in Music City Roots not uh, about a year ago when I wrote this with a guy named Mondo Signs, a great songwriter. And, uh, but then we reworked it, and I've got it on a record that's going to be coming out in July. And, uh, and it's about the passing of years, so I thought this would be a good Something day to do it. with, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm So anyway, so here we go. Woke up with our hands on our heads. Rolled off the wrong side of the bed It's sad when it's not the same No point in passing around the blame The things that were meant to do That we didn't get to Time flies it Don't it seem like a dream come between When it could be calm Seem like a dream come between when it could be cause After the changes You can't turn nothing back Until the curtain comes Way back in our early days Trying to run through the maze Still searching for our stroke of luck Guess we're all still growing up If it's not too much to lose Wanna hear some different news Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between When it could be calm Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between When it could be cause After the changes You can't turn nothing back The different stages Have played a different act to our amazement We almost made it Until the curtain comes Time flies Don't it seem like a dream come between When it could be calm Time flies Don't it 
it seemed like a dream come between when it could be calm. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Allie. Allie What's Sutton's here. Allie Sutton. Whoa. Before we get going, there's something that I am just dying to say to Jim. Happy birthday to you. Well, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Lauderdale. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jim. Like Mine's June 14th. Mine's August 14th, but it can be today if you want it to be. <laughs> well, that's right, folks. And you know, people were saying, you know, gosh, on your birthday, I'm sure you're gonna go someplace where Rome, the beach, <laughs> you know, wherever I said no. That I'm Nashville gonna be Palace with, with my your friends buddies. here at the Nashville Palace at Music City no Roots. Finer place to be. Well, it's so good to be here tonight, and we're so glad y'all are here. And uh, hey, but first, before that, uh, hey, I really, really want to tell you what a pleasure it is for us to be here at the Nashville Palace, and for us, yeah. this place is great. I'll tell you, it, it's probably the hippest spot for classic country music in town right now. I think. Yeah. And it's great to be here, and great to welcome my co-hosts for lo these many years. You've heard his world-famous voice bring us to the air. He's been a microphone's best friend for four decades, Radio Hall of Famer, Keith Bilbrey. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this little microphone's been my best friend, too. Huh? Well... And uh, over in our Roots on the Road chat room, there they talk the talk. Please welcome our interview guy and indescribable scribe, Craig Avinghurst. Yeah! It's a little ad hoc this week, but that's fine. We are pleased to be here. This place, this place puts the tonk back in honky-tonk. This place yeah, looks so right, yeah. good. So for your radio audience, we are sitting in a, a place that is... Uh, couldn't be more fit for country music. Thanks, y'all, for coming. We have a killer crowd here tonight, and these Roots on the Road shows have been just super enjoyable. We are paying tribute tonight to little Jimmy Dickens in the great state of West Virginia, and uh, I have uh, got some West Virginia in my family some years ago when my sister married a fellow from Charleston, and they are there to this day and loving life. We love visiting them up there, and if they are listening or watching, I hope they are. Hello to the Cook family in Charleston, West Virginia. I get to do that. Um, let me tell you a little bit about some of the folks that help keep the show uh, going and quenching our thirst and doing the printing for us. On the printing front, we work with the great Dex Imaging. They provide printing equipment that makes those programs you're holding, and we appreciate them. They've been especially helpful now as we're in transition to our new home offices. You can learn more about them at DexImaging.com. And of course, Yeehaw Brewing, good friends of the show, their friends, their partners, Old Smokey and Real Water, all those three together have kept our green room stocked for the artists with some liquid libations and hydrations for everybody. I didn't know about the moonshine. I'll go explore that to make sure it's there. We have a wonderful lineup. Yeehaw brings the lineup as well. And uh, you know who you're going to see, but let me tell you who they are. And you give each one a round of applause in turn. One of my favorite country music discoveries in the 90s when I was figuring this music out and rediscovering how deep and wonderful it was, Kathy Matea is going to close the show tonight. Yeah. One of the great voices. Our bluegrass buddy, a man who revolutionized bluegrass music in the 1980s, Tim O'Brien, yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. A country music hall of famer, besides being in the West Virginia Hall of Fame. Uh, a voice that's been compared to the greatest of all time, to Barbara Streisand's voice, and to Maria Collis' voice, Connie Smith. Yeah! Nobody, nobody better to sing you some country and gospel music. Fellow we've enjoyed the company of in Music City Roots before, one of the premier songwriters from West Virginia who stayed there and is making that culture uh, that much richer. Todd Burge is coming up here too long, for too long. 
And an artist that's come in especially for this show, he's going to be joined by the Carpenter Ants who are about to start the show, the great John Ellison, Soul Man. Yeah. And Jim will introduce our first band. All right. Well, folks, it's been five years since we've welcomed these guys to the root stage. And even then, they'd been together longer than some of our guests, artists had been alive. They've got longevity and soul, and they're going to be joined by some special guests here tonight. Let's get things started right with the Carpenter Ants. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. We're really happy to be here. This is going to be a little bit of a West Virginia love fest. I hope you can deal with that. It's only for one night. <laughs> traditional West Virginia song. You go right on. 
to heaven, but I've been told it's a first class city with the streets of gold. Keep your hand right on that plow, you go right on. I got my hand on the gospel plow, I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. Keep your hand right. Tim O'Brien. And you'll hear Russ Hicks on pedal steel. And then you'll hear Kathy Matea, John Ellison, and Connie Smith. Here's another traditional West Virginia song. Like I said, we're sticking sticking to our roots tonight. It's about a it's about a thing that we still do up there. We chase around wild hogs, <laughs> slit their throat, and <laughs> drink their blood. Cloggers out there, this is a good clogging song. There's a walking young girl with Diddy on down, Diddy on down.
So this is uh, also a little bit of a promo celebration for a record that the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame put out to pay tribute to little Jimmy Dickens. And he's in uh, kind of abstentia, but he's back there if you want to kind of buddy up, take a picture. Um, so we enlisted lots of folks to do their versions of some of little Jimmy's songs. And everyone, is gonna, everyone who's playing tonight is going to do at least one. Um, <clears throat> he had a very large and rich catalog and did a lot of songs beyond, beyond the novelty songs. He was called King of the Novelty Song. And he had top ten hits in four decades, I believe. <clears throat> but there was also kind of a rich underbelly of material that a lot of people don't know. And one of the songs that we glommed on to was How to Catch an African Skeeter Alive. Just for the brothers. <laughs> yeah. Just for the brothers. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, know. you know, it's all right. That's what you do. That's what you do if you want to learn how to catch an African skeeter line. Friends, romance, and countrymen, let you is to my job. I'm gonna tell you how to catch an African skeeter line. You go down to the wilds of Africa and you get grabbing kinds of lunch. And you find them up in a coconut tree going on munch and munch and munch munch. Your skeeter captain stuff includes a star 10 years old. A great big sack full of hand grenades and a hundred feet of rope. You're gonna need a 12 pound hammer and a helmet made of steel and a rabbit's foot to bring you luck so you won't come home killed. That's what you do. I sure ain't talking no job. That's what you do. If you wanna learn how to catch an African skeeter line. Well, you take that 12 pound hammer and you pounce upon his back and you bash between them shoulder blade till he turn blue and black don't worry about the 12 pound hammer beating that skeeter to death this just catches his attention and makes him hunt for his breath and now you tie him up all up and you tie him with your rope you tie a granny knot a wing knot a navy not who's not what not Because it's with that skeeter Girl, that skeeter ain't no fool Work hard and save your money And join the skeeter cats in school That's what you do I sure ain't talking no job That's what you do If you want to learn how to catch an African skeeter live That's what you do If you want to ain't talking no job That's what you do if you want to learn how to catch an African skeet of too far up the chart. <laughs> I don't know why. So we're going to close yeah. out our little set with a song we wrote about West Virginia called the West Virginia Mambo. And um, I don't know if anybody is familiar with the geography of West Virginia, but the southern part is home to uh, 
was home to all the coal fields and is having a pretty difficult time these days. We went down and we had a friend of ours choreograph a song, a dance to this song. And um, taught kids in Kermit, West Virginia, how to do the dance and then made a video. And it's on YouTube, like everything else. Um, West WV Mambo. So Tim is going to join us for this. He's going to dance, too. Tim, dance. Thought you were going to dance. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I want to see it. Gotcha. <laughs> Come on, clap your hands, y'all. Y'all too over there. If you're feeling low, I'll tell you what to do. Got a brand new dance, gonna teach it to you. You gotta keep moving, run the West Virginia hills. There's ants in your pants, you can't stand still. Whoa. And with the West Virginia Mambo, Hear Billy Shay. I get up and down on it in the mountains. Say, hey. I wake up with the roosters. I cock a doodle do. Chicken from the egg, fry him up in a pan, and then I'm on my way to school. Cause I'm no fool. I do the West Virginia Mambo, the hillbilly shake. release since the late 80s. Yeah. 
Carpenter, the, car the Carpenter Ants, everybody. That was fantastic. I think they liked y'all. Thank Woo! you so much. It's great to see you guys. Wonderful. The Carpenter Ants. I never liked Carpenter Ants till I heard them. Man, they, they're great. Yeah. I, I, whatever he said, you know, the monitors aren't working. Uh, Don't whatever, pull that uh, stuff. Sure. No kidding, Keith. Uh, I know. <laughs> Nothing's changed. Anytime I say anything you don't like or understand, you act like you didn't hear it. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Keith. No. Uh, I want to turn things over to you, my friend. Well, it's your birthday. I've got to kind of... Be nice to hey, you. Hey, you know what the nicest birthday present you could possibly do for me? Now, what's that? Is just say anything, just so the folks and I can hear you just say anything. Ooh, that. it's getting deep in here. Nice French accent. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Thanks to Bo Jennings and all the great folks here at the Nashville Palace for being such gracious hosts to MCR as we tour some of Nashville's finest music rooms on our way to a new venue downtown later this year. We're proud to be welcome to do what we do here tonight. I am so thrilled to be here. This is my old stomping grounds. I know all about this place. As a matter of fact, right over there, I have a picture of me and Jimmy Dickens sitting right over there in one of those booths. We're having a little libation and having a good time. You don't buy a diamond every day, but when that special time comes, just remember that you've got good friends in the diamond business who just happen to have a product on the cutting edge of the diamond industry. Go to the web, star129.com, to learn why and how the Star 129 was created to literally outshine ordinary diamonds. Take a look at those before and after photos of diamonds that were recut into Star 129s. Absolutely stunning. Now, here in Nashville, the Star 129 diamond is available exclusively at Forster's Diamond Outlet. If you're in the Hickory Hollow neighborhood, stop by and see a live comparison. You will not believe your eyes. Now, if you're not in Nashville, you can find a whole list of Star 129 dealers around the country at star129.com. And now, over in the chat room, there's Craig Havikers. Some distinguished company over here, folks. Boy, you these have. Gentlemen, uh, these gentlemen helped put tonight together. We are very grateful to him. Some of the, the idea, the, some of the logistics in the lineup. Please welcome Tim O'Brien and Todd Burge to the stage. We deeply appreciate it. This was a, this was a, a stroke of uh, just brilliant idea. So can you just talk about the origins of it and began to call? Uh, we haven't seen the Carpenter Ants in five years, as Keith said, and, and uh, to get John Ellison here. This was, took some real doing. Thank you. Well, there's really a lot of people involved in this, but uh, the origins are the, the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame and, um, and just 
you know, basically the appreciation of West Virginia music and uh, uh, the album um, Rhinestone Hillbilly that's over, that's here tonight. And uh, we just thought we, we should we should come to town and, and show our wares. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Tim, Todd wrote something amazing in our program that you guys can see about, about little Jimmy. So I'll let you give your own personal tribute here. <laughs> I don't think he could top that. He probably could. But um, when did you first see little Jimmy Dickens and become aware that he was a home, uh, a home state hero? I don't think I ever saw him when I was living in West Virginia. But I remember when, um, when the bird of paradise flies up your nose. Not, that's not the title. The bird of paradise flies up your nose. May the bird of paradise flies? May, may, may the bird of paradise. Whatever it is. Whatever the title is. I remember that song. And I went, wow, well, that's pretty wild. And that was a, like a crossover hit. But um, coming to Nashville, Jimmy Dickens is king, you know. And, um, and then when we started the Music Hall of Fame in, in West Virginia, he was obviously one of our first guys to try to get inducted. And we, he was in our first class of inductees. And... I got to meet him as a result. You know, I get, had a reason to call him up on the phone, <laughs> which is great. I went to his house. I went to his office. He played me live tapes from the 40s when he was wow. in Berlin right after the World War II. And, um, and uh, it was a fantastic thing. And I got to record with him as well. Todd's main point that he wrote was, was that somebody like that coming from Little Bolt, West Virginia, and uh, becoming famous. And somebody that, you know, it's not like the first person you'd expect could be could you know somebody who had a, a, a lot of stature uh, in reality, uh, even if he didn't have a lot of stature on the st you know in, in height, he just had, he was if anybody was larger than life, and by doing so by by leaving the state and re reflecting well and still staying loyal to it, made the culture of West Virginia richer. Yeah, yes, exactly. It was it, for somebody like me that uh, you know played music in the state of West Virginia. We need uh, all the inspiration we can find, you know. And and he was he was a big deal, you know. I, I my beginnings were uh, in Morgantown, West Virginia, and uh, and um, you know it was really a, a garage band punk rock thing. But uh, even even in our community, we knew we knew Little Jimmy Dickens. We knew the rockabilly stuff, and he was a real inspiration to us West Virginia songwriters and musicians. Before we go, Todd, what are you up to these days musically? How can people find you, and what are you? Because you've stayed in the state and are enriching that culture. Well, I I'm in I stay in Parkersburg, and I'm proud to be there. And I you know I, I leave plenty and, and on the road, and I'm I'm constantly writing and putting out music. And if you can spell Todd Burge, you can find me online. Find so me. <laughs> he's a tremendous songwriter. We're going to hear that before too long. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Greg. Todd and Tim, on with the music. You, Jim Lauderdale. Thanks, well, friends, here's an artist who took part in the historic revolution that played out at Atlantic Records in the late 1960s. He sang with the Soul Brothers Six and wrote the iconic Some Kind of Wonderful, recorded by more than 60 artists. We're so proud and honored to have him here tonight. Please welcome John Ellison. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here in Nashville. Hello, everybody. I'm 
gonna pack up my old car I'm gonna head for the state line Cause I miss my friends I left behind I'm in a West Virginia state of mind I'm in a West Virginia state of mind And I miss seeing the coal trucks Hauling coal from the mine The old folks in their rocking chairs Rocking away the time And I miss seeing my daddy Playing checkers with his friends I miss hearing his laughter Each time that he wins And I miss the sweet, sweet smell Of mama's blackberry cobbler And the sound of birds Singing in the summertime I'm in a West Virginia state of mind I'm in a West Virginia state of mind Ladies and gentlemen, Russick's on the... about this place You can see it in everybody's face Every woman Every man and every child They greet you with a smile That's that West Virginia style Make you want to run a country mile I'm in a West Virginia State of mind. I'm in a West Virginia state of mind. If you were born and raised in these West Virginia hills, you would know exactly how I feel. I'm in a West Virginia state, a West Virginia state. A West Virginia state of mind I'm in a West Virginia state A West Virginia state A West Virginia state of mind I'm in a West Virginia state A West Virginia state A West Virginia state Thank you. I'm in a West Virginia state of mind. Woo! This next song that we're going to do, I wrote that song about West Virginia about five years ago because I am truly West Virginia from my top of my head to the bottom of my feet. I love West Virginia. Another song I wrote, this song is called When You Talk to Jesus put in a word for me. And the reason I wrote this song because like all of you, I've lied every sometime <laughs> in some point in my life mm -mm. about something. So we all fall short when it comes to being perfect. Can I get a witness? Hey. <laughs> so the way this song came about I, I love gambling. <laughs> so I had this habit. I would go down to Atlantic City every weekend with my brother. And my wife said to me one day, she said, you got to promise me that you will not go back to the casino. Nah, I mean, how can I promise that? <laughs> so, so just to, for the sake of not arguing, I said, OK, I promise I won't go. So my brother called me up. He said, oh, we're going to meet in Atlantic City this weekend. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I told my brother, I said, okay, I'll meet you at your house. 
I didn't tell the lie. I tried to meet him at his house. So when my wife asked me where was I going, I said, I'm going to meet my brother. She said, you going back to Atlantic City? I said, no, I'm going to his house. We're going to meet him at his house. But on the way down, I knew I was lying. I knew I was going to Atlantic City. So I wrote this song, and it goes like this. And if any of you can, if this song fits any of you, you can sing along with me. <laughs> and I'll teach it to you. you can, I want everybody, when we come to this punchline, you say, when you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. And when you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. Tell him I need him to help me find my way. Are we ready? All right. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. Tell him I need him to help me find my way. Lord knows I'm weak and I'm trying to be strong. To do right, but I keep doing wrong. I'm just another sinner. I can't help myself. Ain't nobody perfect, and I'm like everybody else. So when you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus. Tell him I need him to help me find my way. Play a bit. Me. 
work for me. Tell him I need him to help me find my way. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. When you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me. Tell him I need him to help me find. So when you talk to Jesus, put in a word for me because I need it. <laughs> okay. We're going to do another Little Jimmy song that uh, you may have heard, you may have not heard. He was, um, before, again, before he did his novelty songs, he did rockabilly stuff. He was also the first person to introduce twin guitar leads, which he used on the intros in... Uh, for, all, for most of his songs. So here's one called I Got a Hole in My Pocket. <laughs> Okay, the 
before this this is the last song I'm going to do but this is the song that I wrote back in 1967 most of you know this song by Grand Funk Railroad this song was first recorded by a group called the Soul Brothers 6 we were on Atlantic Records I was the lead singer and songwriter for the group to date some kind of wonderful has been recorded by 65 artists it's the most recorded song in music history thank you and it is also, it's been on the radio over six million times, which makes it the third most played song in the world. And I remember writing that song. A lot of people ask me, how did I write that song? And why did I write it? Some asked me if I wrote it about my wife. No, I did not. I was not married at the time. It took me about 20 minutes to write the song. I was in a car driving from Rochester, New York to Philadelphia. And I had just left this woman that I'd spent the night with, and I told her she was some kind of wonderful. <laughs> that's a true story. <laughs> so, so that's how the song came about, and right now I'm gonna do it for you. It goes like this. I don't need a whole lot of money. Talking about my baby 
John Ellison, everybody. Some kind of incredible, huh? John Ellison, thank you guys so much. Whew. What a night, huh? You having fun out there yet, ladies and gentlemen? Whoa. Some kind of wonderful. Some kind of fantastic. Good stuff. Well, you're listening to Roots Radio 89.5, WMOT, Murfreesboro, Nashville, Americana, deep and wide. Please remember to support public radio. Find your way to WMOT.org and press that donate button. Very important. It can get you invited to private members' events like Wired In with Jesse Scott. Learn more at WMOT.org. And I'm excited to be starting a new show on WMOT. It'll debut in a few weeks. Stay tuned for Keith's Country on Roots Radio. Really looking forward to that. Matter of fact, I got a lot of Jimmy Dickens stories to tell you during that show. Don't forget to take a lunch break this Friday right here at the Nashville Palace as your witness, Whit Hubner, host Finally Fridays from noon to 2. Speaking of WMOT, we'd like to give a shout out to Acceptance Auto Insurance, who not only supports our nationwide PBS television series, they also underwrote the Acceptance Morning Ride on WMOT, weekdays from 6 to 9, with 12 offices around Middle Tennessee and 400 all across the country. Wherever your song takes you, Acceptance has you covered. Learn more at acceptance.com. You your terms accepted. I'd like to say Kathy Matea is in the building. I just saw her a few minutes ago. And right now I'm going to toss it over to Craig. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Keith. Folks, the Carpenter Ants are a tremendous band with a long history, at least 25, maybe even 30 years uh, together. And uh, the leader of that band is also the leader of the West Virginia Halt Music Hall of Fame. And he is Michael Lipton. Make him welcome. I was hoping before the night was over, somebody could tell us definitively about the West Virginia Hall of Fame and how it came to be and why it's so cool. You're the man to ask. Well, uh, I happened to be at the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2004, and I was driving home, and I said, gee, we've got a pretty rich history of music in West Virginia also. Why don't we have one of these? And that's, and that's one of the great things about the state of West Virginia is you get an idea, you can... You can make it happen. Can you talk about some of the sort of the steps and, and who you pulled together and what the vision was? Well, basically the vision was just to recognize these people, but also um, perhaps you haven't heard that West Virginia is the butt of a lot of uh, bad national press, <laughs> maybe a few jokes even. So um, one of the things we really try and do is give young people and 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 adults as well, some state pride. And uh, we want them to love where they live because it's a great place. And, and one of the things you can do to help that along is to give them kind of icons and reasons to, um, to be proud. And music is a part of everyone's life, especially in West Virginia. There's a rich tradition of back porch music. So, uh, so, so our mission is to kind of spread that word. Is there an artist you could name that either you had a personal fondness for or that you were proud to have elevated from a place that wasn't a household name, that you felt, and, and, and the committees that, that do this, felt super proud to sort of lift up and, and add to that Hall of Fame that helped them become even more famous? Well, another aspect of this that, that I personally enjoy is everybody thinks of Country music, gospel, traditional, maybe bluegrass when they think of West Virginia. Um, as in every other state, there's a rich, rich history of music in all genres. Like um, two of the founding members of Parliament Funkadelic were yeah. from West Virginia. Um, Jack Rollins, a songwriter, wrote Frosty the Snowman, Peter Cottontail, and Smokey the Bear. In fact, Jack put the the in Smokey the Bear because his real name is Smokey Bear. <laughs> Um, Billy Cox, who lives in Nashville, was yeah. Jimi Hendrix's longest-running bass player. Yeah, He's from that was Wheeling, a nice West one Virginia. to see. It's tremendous. Before we go, give folks a, uh, some liner notes on the Carpenter Ants. What a, what a great run. Um, liner notes? Well, you know, just oh, your, oh. Your, your quick take and your story about well, this band and these guys. 
we've been together for, I think, 33 years now. We've um, made music over the eastern seaboard and mid-Atlantic, traveled overseas, and uh, just, it's a fantastic bunch of guys, and um, we feel like there's a, a certain chemistry there that mixes a lot of different elements. And, that, and that's also, if I go back to West Virginia yeah, for a second, sure. one of the things that we uh, also like to point out about the state. For instance, Bill Withers. What is Bill Withers? Is he soul, pop, rock, folk? He's a little bit of all of that. And that's one of the things that makes it wonderful, but it also makes it hard, tough to pigeonhole. Right. And, and we like to think that we have some of those elements, too. You absolutely do. Tremendous band. We're really thrilled to have you back, and thanks for your contributions to the night and to the Little Jimmy Dickens CD, and uh, on we go. Okay, thank you. We appreciate it. Michael Lipton, everybody, and the Carpenter Ants behind them. They're going to be back. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Well, folks, here's one of the key guys who helped put tonight's incredible lineup together. He's a West Virginia lifer who takes proper pride in his home state's culture, and it's a treat having him back to share that with us at Roots. Please make welcome Todd Burge. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. A song coming up. It's going to take you to West Virginia. It's going to take you to Wood County, West Virginia. Okay, I think we're ready here. It's great to be back on Music City Roots, and I'm proud to do this tribute to little Jimmy Dickens. Uh, I'd like to start out with a song called Wood County Man.
lot of trouble in a faraway land to make me want to be a wood counting man. It took a lot of trouble in a faraway land to make me want to be a wood counting man. To make me want to die a wood counting man. So if you can find a way to save this land And put it into some honest hand it on down to my newborn son He can grow up to be a Wood County man Thank you very much. So uh, th maybe this was about 30 years ago. I went to, uh, with my buddy uh, Jim Clinton, uh, we went to the Wood County Fair uh, to see little Jimmy Dickens play. And uh, we, we had been covering a song of his, and we were just dying to get there to see little. It was a big deal for us to go see little Jimmy Dickens play at the Wood County Fair. And uh, when we pulled up, he was, he was already playing, and we were disappointed. We got the time wrong. We were an hour late. And uh, he was like at the end of his last song, and we went up and we, we said, shopping for dresses when he was done. And, uh, and he goes, I just played that three songs ago. I'm sorry. And oh, shopping for dresses. And, and he said, well, all right. He got back up on stage, and he played it just for us. And, and so we're going to play it just for you right now. And this is Shopping for Dresses by Little Jimmy Dickens and uh, Merle Haggard. Down through the ages, men have died for their women. They've done it so many times And each time I've loved one I've always lost one Guess the right one is so hard to find Well, I'm shopping for dresses With no one to wear them One in each color will be done for a while Somewhere there's a lady Shopping for britches Comparing the value Appraising each pair Maybe someday the good Lord Will get us together We'll both have a new wardrobe to wear Well, I'm shopping for dresses with no one to wear them one in each color one in each style maybe someday i'll find me a lady to wear them my shopping will be done for a while my shopping will be done
So I went to school at West Virginia University there in Morgantown. No applause. There's three. <laughs> Let's go, Mountaineers. I was having a, this. This next song is. Uh, it was really. Uh, it, uh, I changed the name to uh, to uh, to protect the guilty, and uh, but uh, a friend of mine got together and we were, we were talking about all the things. That if we could remember everything that we did at WVU, we probably wouldn't be so uh, so uh, you know look back on the good old days as good old days. So, here we go. Was it in the spring or early last summer when I ran into Baby Ray? We were trying to remember all the good old times that left us so old and in the way. Said I'm like an old shirt that you can barely wear, but you squeeze your fat coat in it anyway. Seems I threw my diploma instead of my cap and blew what the future had in store for me. Hey, baby Ray, I think I miss your laughing face and the good old days, us living in a drunken haze. And if I could remember. Saying, I miss my days with baby Ray. Hey, now, did we have a time? A whole lot of time I can't remember because I was barely in it. Now we're out of time, there's never enough time. I know it because I'm living every minute. Now, baby Ray and me seem to have some enemies. I feel certain that I never met, but I'm not good at names and I'm not good at faces when it comes to my days. But baby Ray, I think I miss your laughing face And the good old days, us living in a drunken haze And if I could remember everything about those days I'm sure I'd stop saying I miss my days with baby Ray Did we go to school at all that fall? Which school, what fall, what a ball? Or did we go on a long spring break that too soon became so broken? I wish I had a token or some type of souvenir to help show me why I smile from ear to ear. There probably are a couple laying around here, stinking like a stale can of beer. Hey, baby, Ray, I think I miss your laughing face. Us living in a purple haze And if I could remember Everything about those days I'm sure I'd stop saying I miss my days with baby Ray If I could remember Everything about those days I'm sure I'd stop saying I miss my days with baby Ray Atamanik on drums back here. Let's hear from Mike Bubb on bass. Shad Cobb on the fiddle. Russ Hicks. Russ Hicks on the pedal steel. Yay. And Tim O'Brien, of course, you know Tim. Tim O'Brien on the mandolin. Uh, 
So we, we're going to do one more song, or I'm going to do one more song. Uh, and uh, this is, a, this is uh, a song about uh, throwing salt on a dance floor to make your, you know, your shuffle easier. It's called the Salty Boogie. It's a little Jimmy Dickens song. Salt on the floor, sweep it all around, do the boogie to the salty sound. Hey, shuffle on salt, boogie on salt. If you don't have fun, it's your own darn fault. Hey, listen. You do the salty boogie till the old barn tumbles down. So we're going to do a, this is another song that's off Rhinestone Hillbilly, and, uh, and it's, uh, it features Russ Hicks on v vocals here, folks. Russ Hicks is going to do a song for you. Hey, I'm, in, uh, I'm playing a steel guitar tonight that's borrowed. That's, uh, sometimes it, it works out that way, but uh, this song sort of explains why it's borrowed instead of uh, my own. And it, it's, uh, they found this on the Jimmy Dickens album from uh, the 1960s. And it goes uh, something like this. Now I'm a guitar picker. Musician is my trade. Full-fledged union member. Lord knows where all I played But the other day I left my things In the trunk of my old car Would you believe some dirty dog Stole my steel guitar It was just an old used show But for which I saved and scraped I bought it back in Nashville From a cat whose name was Drake So I loved it like my woman And I cherished every wire with sticky hands and stole my steel guitar. I played it every day then, in the polished day and he stayed. I had the only show, but in Podunk, Iowa, I was king of all the women. They came from near and far, but the man sure did stop that all. 
steel guitar. It was just an old used show, but for which I saved its great. And I bought it back in Nashville from a cat whose name was Drake. Oh, I loved it like my woman. I cherished every wire. And I killed the man with sticky hands who stole my steel guitar. Could play like Roy Wiggins, Don Helms, or Jerry Bird. I could make you sing forever and never slur a word. And when I played like Emmons, well, it nearly caught on fire. But I don't play no hot licks now, they stole my steel guitar. It was just an old you show, but for which I saved and scraped. And I bought it back in Nashville from a cat whose name was Drake. And I loved it like my woman, and I cherished every wire. And I killed a man with sticky hands who stole my steel guitar. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that loud outburst. All right, what's it? Mighty fine. Hey, let's hear it for Todd Burge. What a great set, Todd Burge. That's Keith, good stuff. that is. That I sure like is. that. All right. Music City Roots receives support for this broadcast from businesses that are leaders in our community. Like Ascend Federal Credit Union, Ascend offers convenient online account access, bill payment, and statements with an app to access your accounts on the go. Visit ascendfcu.org to register for e-services from Ascend. Ascend Federal Credit Union, raising possibilities. Ascend is federally insured by the NCUA Membership is limited. Well, Craig Havakhurst is getting into place over at the chat room, and he's going to be bringing us another interview as soon as he gets all set up there. You're doing good. You're doing good. Yeah. You can announce Kathy. She's coming out right now. Oh, yes. I saw Kathy and Connie Smith's back there. I've been back there chatting with them. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to have a chat with me, Kathy Matea. Yeah. Come on. Big entrance. There you go. So delighted that you have come to sing for us at the end of the show tonight. A great West Virginian for sure. I've known, you've you've radiated love for that state ever since I've you know started following oh. music and you know the first time I'm on the Opry, my parents are like, you know, little Jimmy Dickens is from West Virginia. I'm like, yes, I know, I know, <laughs> but it's like you're related or something. You know, it's like right. It's a it's a big thing. What song did you sing on the tribute, by the way, or maybe more than one? Oh, I sang a song called "Sleeping at the Foot of the Bed." Sure. Because it's just so. F- freaking fun i'm like now all i want to do is put together a swing band and sing swing music all the time it's great what 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 do you remember about jimmy dickens what what did you love about him well he was you know he was he was a iconic at the opry he was just always there and he would always say hello and stuff but i have to tell you this story because we've been talking about it backstage and none of us know the story well enough to tell all the details and i'm the one that sort of has the excuse for not knowing it well but um I was talking to, you know, Ken Burns is about to do, um, uh, he's doing a whole retrospective on country music. Yeah. So uh, he's been working on this for several years, and I was talking to someone who was working on the show, and, and he started telling me a story about, about that, he, that he had heard from Vince Gill about Jimmy Dickens and how he met his wife. And I guess she had come, she had, he had been going around the country doing interviews at radio stations, and she had called in the station And she said she was going to be at the show that night. She came out to see him. And um, he met her. And he went on, and he couldn't stop thinking about her. And she wrote him a letter. She wrote him this amazing letter. And he he decided that he wanted to find her, but he didn't know where she was. And so he was playing all over the country. And one night he signed an autograph after the show, and she comes up to him. And she says, I don't know if you remember me. But I called into the radio station that day and I wrote you a letter and he reached in his jacket pocket and pulled the letter out of his jacket and said, I've been looking for you. (laughs) 
And it was Mona, his wife. They, they got married. Someone's nodding their head. You probably know the story better than I do. But I just, I just thought it was the sweetest thing, you know? It's like everybody's, everybody's dream that you would yeah. find a love that way. He had, such, he had tons and tons of energy, and it was very genuine. I mean, he, he would mentor young artists. He would tend to the older ones. He was just an absolute lovely human being, it yeah. sounds like, from all accounts. I, I always say, think, too, it's, it really says... Um, a lot about a performer when they can really make you laugh and really make you cry both right. uh, you know if you can run the full gamut of human emotion through your music that just says you know how to connect on a visceral level right. which is what it's all about now as for you just before we uh, get out of here uh, you and Tim have been your old friend Tim, Tim O'Brien have been working on a project maybe you've together. heard of him Tim O'Brien yeah, yes. so, uh, everybody's you, musical friend what do you have up your sleeve <laughs> Well, uh, I, I called Tim up when, I, actually I woke up at two o'clock in the morning one night and I was like, I need to ask Tim if he'll produce this record for me. So I called him up and he said, sure. And uh, so he was on the road and I was on the road. So we'd get together for a few days here and there. It took us a year to make this record, but we just finished it. It'll be out in September. Right, right, right. Are you writing songs like a, like a crazy person these days? Are you writing? Oh, I'm just working on all kinds. I have a bunch of projects that have come into my head, and I'm too embarrassed to even tell you because when I do, the voice comes up and says, what do you think you're doing? There's no way you can do that. So I'm just pecking away at stuff and just, you know, yes, I'm doing some writing and all right. other things. Well, some new music is always welcome, yeah. and the old familiar songs, welcome too. Kathy Matei will sing for you before too long. It's always Thanks, great Craig. to see you. Gosh. Good to see you. On with the show. Jim oh, Lauderdale yeah. is over yes. there to do some more yes. professional introducing. Well, folks, make way for a legend. This artist's unparalleled voice has been lifting people up and helping them through heartbreak for many years. She's the essence of classic country and country gospel music. We're thrilled to welcome the great Connie Smith. tell you I'm Tim O'Brien's biggest fan. Great to work with you and all you guys and 
That steel player back there worked with me when he was just a pup. <laughs> so I just thank this band. How about giving the band a hand? And Jimmy Dickens was one of my greatest heroes. So I, when they asked me to be a part of this tribute album for the West Virginia Hall of Fame, I jumped at the chance. So uh, this is a song that I picked to do for Jimmy on that record. very much and I would like to do this song because I can always always introduce this song as the story of my life
And I wanted to do a, another song for little Jimmy Dickens. He was my friend. And uh, this is a song that I always thought was so great. Uh, I don't know for sure if uh, Felice and Boudlow wrote this or who, but they wrote it especially for Jimmy Dickens. talking about right there. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Connie. Well, Keith, how's everything going? You know, a lot of these folks don't know about your pop-up store, uh, Keith Bilbury's Burberry Village. And so be looking out for it. You know, if you get on Keith's mailing list, you'll find out. You never know when he might pop up with some of the finest Burberry. That's you, uh, you, Keith Bilbury's Burberry. You bought Burberry. that suit for me, didn't you? I sure did. I remember shipping it out. I remember, too. I yeah. remember receiving it. It was <laughs> like yesterday. It was, was a moment, wasn't well, Keith, it? Keith, I'll tell you what. How about one of those great station IDs? Well, I will do my best. All I've really got to say is it's uh, you're listening to WMOT, Murfreesboro, Nashville, and this is Music City Roots. And over there in the chat room, Craig Havoghurst and my friend Connie Smith. Take it away. Lucky me, lucky me. One more time for Connie Smith. I, oh, thank hearing you. her sing Amazing Grace just... Thanks. Things must have changed when little Jimmy passed at the Opry. It must have been hard to show up the next week and kind of re realize in, in its absence what had been there before. Huh? Well, it's... Uh 
as I said earlier, he was one of my, really, one of my heroes. And I used to stand and watch him backstage at the Opry. And he stood and watched everybody. He didn't miss anything. He knew, uh, he knew everybody from the new artists to the young artists. And he knew who was good and who needed some coaching and who needed, <laughs> who needed some correcting. And, uh, I mean, if uh, he didn't like people being late, and he'd let you know it <laughs> if you were. And he was just a consummate entertainer. He, and he was great as far as his talking. His... his um, commentating and his talking was as good as his singing and, and you don't get any better than Jimmy Dickens doing a ballad. Yeah, I, I have a hard time remembering jokes in life, but I remember his jokes. They were so crisp <laughs> and so, uh, so spot on. When did you first encounter his music? Where, uh, just uh, going back a ways, when did you begin to realize who this guy was? And... Uh, when I was little, uh, growing up in Ohio, we had a battery radio and we'd listen to the Grand Ole Opry and, you know, just as soon as Jimmy was there, you know, it was, uh, everything came alive. Because he knew how, to, he was really an entertainer. Mm -hmm. He knew how to entertain. How did he welcome you to that illustrious club when you got to be part of it? Well, he was, he was really, really kind to me. And he showed me a picture of me that he had. That he had, he had seen somewhere and he'd, he'd cut it out and he had that picture. But he, he also uh, used to introduce me on the Opry and uh, it, it was just uh, the sweetest introductions anybody could ever give you. So I was really proud when he introduced me. <laughs> Can we just talk a second about what you're up to? Uh, any projects, anything that you've been putting your mind to that you're excited about? Or? Well, actually, my husband, Marty Stewart, and I are uh, working on uh, songs for, to cut another album. It's been a while, since 2012, so we've gathered up songs, and we've, we just need a couple more. <laughs> we even have a new Dallas Frazier song, which will be my 72nd song of his to record. <laughs> <laughs> right? Saw him last fall, and... The, the current fabulous superlatives with Chris Gruggs and the band at the Ryman sounded like some, it just pinned me back. That is as good a band as going, going in, the, in the world right now. And uh, y'all see Marty Stewart and the fabulous superlatives. And we'll watch for new music. That's pretty exciting. We can yes. see you on the Opry regularly. Yes, and we'll be in Dollywood Saturday. Yep. Yep. Right. My band, East. the Sundowners, and I. Yeah. Head over to East Tennessee. And the Opry Friday. Thanks for being with us tonight. It means oh. the world to us. Oh, and thank uh, we you. appreciate you. I'm Connie proud Smith, to be folks. Here. God bless you. Fame. Thank you. All right. On with the show, Jim Latterberg. Thanks, Connie. Thanks so much. Well, folks, here's another one of the reasons tonight came together. Now, not only is he a great star of Roots music and a, an exceptional songwriter and picker but he's gone out of his way to be part of our show's community over the years, and we're extremely grateful for that. Thank you so much for that. Please welcome back to the stage, Tim O'Brien. Thank you, Jim. Thank you all for being here at Music City Roots. How do you like the Music City Roots on the road here at the Nashville Palace? You having a nice time tonight? We, uh, I'd never been to the Nashville Palace, and I'm, I don't know why. Now I know I need to come back. gonna grab a big D chord. I'm gonna try to tune it up for you. Well, it's West Virginia night here at Music City Roots, and uh, it's great to be able to visit with all our friends. And uh, I want to tell you a little story about in song about my great grandfather who moved to Wheeling, Virginia. That was back in 1851, before they came up with the name West by God, Virginia. <laughs> He moved from County Cavan, Ireland, and he, he uh, went right to Wheeling. There was work there. The iron mills were, were uh, hot and uh, a lot of jobs, and he worked uh, working on the riverbanks, loading stuff, and eventually got a clerk's job. I'll tell you the story. That's the reason I'm named O'Brien. That's the reason I'm from Wheeling, West Virginia. The song is called Where the River Meets the Road. One, two, three. miles I walk 
one hundred more. And I can smell the smoke pouring off those iron mills. Before I even saw the town from the top of Wheeling Hill, where the river meets the road, where the river meets the road. On the eastern bank of the Ohio, where the river meets the road. And, road. and the railroad came in 53 and they're pushing on, I'm told. They built a big old iron bridge that faces to the west. Well, I stayed here for a job of work and I know it worked out best. Where the river meets the road, where the river meets the road. On the eastern bank of the Ohio, where the river meets the road. She was singing in the choir And her father worked as a blacksmith With his hammer, bellows, and fire I started out as a roustabout And night my back would throb And I made my plan I won her hand When I got my scrivener's job Now I tied the church to pay my bills Send the rest back home Put roots down in Wheeling Town And never moved around I'll teach them how to read and write We'll walk these streets with pride Where the river meets the road Where the river meets the road On the eastern bank of the Ohio Where the river meets the road Where the river meets the road Where the river meets the road Welcome back, Larry uh, Adam Manwick to the stage about the, on the drums. It's a pleasure to play with this fine house band, Mike Bubb on the bass, Shad Cobb on the fiddle, and joining me is my partner in life and in music now, too. Please make her welcome. He, she's from the great state of Kansas. Her name is Jan Fabricius. Make her welcome. Jan Fabricius. The folks at the Bluegrass Festivals, when they'd meet Jan from Kansas, they'd shorten her name to Jansus. And now she lives in Tennessee with me, so I call her Janice. <laughs> All right. We're going to do a song by Bill Withers. It was one earlier by the uh, Carpenter Ants. They did a little bit of lean on me. We're going to do uh, this one about uh, grandmas. And uh, Jan, Jansis over here is the prettiest grandma I know. Thank you. It's called Grandma's Hands.
candy Grandma's hand Pick me up each time I fell Grandma's hand Boy, they really came in handy She said, Manny, don't you hit that boy What you want us banging for? He didn't drop no apple cord But I don't have Grandma anymore When I get to heaven Like I said before, uh, one of the great privileges of being involved with the West Virginia, Virginia Music uh, Hall of Fame is that I get to uh, call up people like Connie Smith and uh, Jimmy Dickens, and uh, I didn't get to call Bill Withers, but I did get to ride, in, Jan and I got to ride in, in a limo with him one night. That was pretty cool. Um, we, uh, the very first year of the inductions, we inducted Bill Withers and, uh, and uh, little Jimmy Dickens, and it was really interesting because Bill Withers is about 6'4", Jimmy Dickens is about 4 feet 8 or something like that. <laughs> and uh, somehow, Bill Withers was still looking up to Jimmy Dickens. That's what I really liked. He they they, had been a fan all his life, and they finally got to meet. Um, there's another Dickens we inducted that year, and her name is Hazel Dickens. Anybody familiar with Hazel's music? Yeah. Hazel left the coal fields in... Uh, her teens to work with her. He followed her brothers up to Baltimore to work at jobs, whatever jobs they could get. And she also played country music and honky-tonk and bluegrass at night. She met up with a lot of northern folkies up there and uh, kind of turned her head around a little bit. She started writing songs. She wrote a lot of great country songs and uh, kind of sticking up for the working man and the working woman. And uh, this is one of her great songs called A Few Old Memories. Oh, wow. 
show where, where if you're looking at your radio you can imagine uh, I'm moving from from the left of your radio to the right slightly right to the center to get another guitar <laughs> this is actually a, yeah we're gonna call up also uh, uh, our good friend please make welcome Kathy Mateo I enjoyed your interview. Thank you. I turned this off, Tim. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get Kathy's vocal, vocal turned up loud. Check, 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 check. There she is. You know, I saw, I saw Jerry Reed one time at the Jamboree in Whaling, where I grew up, and a uh, wonderful Saturday night radio show. Just there, actually, last Saturday. But he said, can you hear me? And the audience said, sort of. And he said, Turn me up, cause I'm really I'm really good. <laughs> then the other guy says, "Am I too loud enough?" <laughs> We're gonna do a song from uh, Jimmy Dickens now, and uh, Michael Lipton threw this my way. It's a perfect song for me. It's an old fiddly tune. I need the lyric sheet, Donna. Maybe he needs his words. There's a lot of them. They're really they're really good words. So someone I could get hurt them. if you don't have your words. You could have a wreck. That's right, you could have a wreck. <laughs> My mom always said, use your words. Anyway, uh, this is called Poor Little Darling, Poor Little Darling, Poor Little Darling. One, two, one, two, three. Poor Little Darling, Poor Little Darling. The wolves will get you, but you know I'll never forget you. Don't you hear the wolves are howling, howling around you, poor little darling, howling around you, poor little darling. Poor little darling, poor little darling, poor little darling. 
you, Kathy. Thank you all. We'll see you in just a bit. Tim O'Brien, everybody. Tim, thank you, my friend. You're such a treasure, I'm telling you. I've been a fan of his for so long, and it's just, uh, it's, it's just incredible. And it's so good to have you here with us tonight. And thank you. He's been the band leader, too, and I think he's doing an, uh, an, an incredible job. Thank you, Tim. And thanks for getting these terrific guys together, too. Yeah. And uh, You going to introduce them? Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Mike, this is Larry. Larry, this is Russ. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. This is Mike Bubb here on the bass. The great Mike Bubb. Larry, Ad Larry Adamaniuk on the drums. Yes, sir. Shad Cobb on the fiddle. And Russ Hicks on the pedal steel. Thank you, guys. Let's give them another hand. Okay. Oh, that's fine. And a big thank you to East Nashvilleian Magazine. Find it on branded racks and all your favorite Music City spots. Have a seat in a cold one and finesse your frontal lobe with a no-compromise, beautifully printed magazine. Remember those? That ain't no birdcage liner, y'all. It's free, old-school magazine quality at your local newsstand. It even feels good to the touch. Get it new school at the East Nashvilleian Dot com. I want to tell one of my favorite Little Jimmy Dickens stories, if I may. I worked with Little Jimmy many times at the Opry. He came to my house. I went to his house. But one of our favorite pastimes, has anybody ever pitched pennies? You know what that is? You know, you stand back and you flip a penny, and whoever gets closest to the wall after it hits the wall and bounces back wins. Jimmy was a great pitching pennies expert. But we did that a lot between shows at the Grand Ole. I even have a picture of us pitching pennies. And I must say, when he passed, I still owed him like 35 cents. <laughs> Thought a lot about that when he passed away, and I finally figured it out. He was so short, he had an advantage when pitching pennies. You know what I'm saying? That rascal, 35 cents I was into him. Weren't you just up in Wheeling the, the I was in week? Wheeling Saturday night. Yeah. I, I thought a lot about Jimmy up there with Charlie McCoy and Ronnie Millsap. Tim O'Brien was with us. Cool. We had a great time at the Wheeling Jamboree. If you ever get a chance to go up to the Capitol Theater and see a show, do it. It is one of the last grand palaces around. The acoustics are just kind of like the Ryman Auditorium. Just nice. beautiful place. It's a great American music tradition. And if, when you go into the lobby there, just before you go into the theater, there's a big... Uh, I guess panorama of, uh, of an actual photo way back when Charlie Pride was appearing that night. And I mean, the people were lined up. Huh. And if you see a young teenager just under the right-hand door there, that would be Tim O'Brien standing in line to go see the Charlie Pride show. How old were you, Tim? 16. 16. Uh, uh, I could drive. Yeah, you could drive. And he drove himself to see Charlie Pride. <laughs> <laughs> I would, too. Great place. Go All ahead, right. Greg. Well, folks, before we have one more set of music, I wanted to meet uh, the one last gentleman who performed for us tonight. Just tremendous to have him. Make welcome back to the stage, John Ellison. Yeah. You, you shared with me this was the first time you've performed in Nashville. How about that? This is the first time, but it will not be the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I truly, truly enjoy being here with all you lovely people, and I look forward to coming back again. I, actually, I was talking to someone earlier, and there's, uh, that's affiliated with bringing artists in, and I, they said definitely I got to come back. So we're we, we're Music City, and we'd love to ha we'd right. love to have you. I would love to hear a bit about so the Soul Brothers Six, uh, right? When 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 they formed and. The idea of getting on Atlantic Records and and this this amid this explosion of of music that Atlantic I mean it was it was just the Cadillac of record labels at the time in America. Uh, can you describe your, your who these guys were and how young you were and how excited you were and what that meant to you? Well, I'll just start from when I first left West Virginia. I had this vision of what I wanted to do with my life, and uh, my father was a coal miner. Uh, I'm the second oldest of six boys, and um, 
When I was 13 years old, I saw Chuck Berry on TV and I said, that's what I want to do. And um, my father, he said to me, my father's idea of earning a living was physical work, where he was a coal miner and he wanted his sons to do the same thing. Well, my ideas and his ideas sort of clashed because I said I was not going to work for anyone. I wanted to uh, make a career with music. So when I was 17 years old, I um, bought a one-way ticket. I didn't tell my parents. <laughs> I was working from 11 o'clock at night to 7 o'clock in the morning at a hotel, and I saved up enough money. And um, I came home one day, and I said, Mom, I said, um, I'm going to New York. And my mother looked at me, and she said, um, look, I don't have time for the foolishness I'm working. She was, she was washing clothes on one of these washboards. And uh, I said, Mom, I'm serious. I said, look, I got a ticket. And she turned around and she looked at me <laughs> and she called my dad. She says, Joe, this, that blame boy that lost his mind. He bought a ticket to New York. <laughs> so my dad came in and um, he looked at me and said, what are you talking about? And I said, Dad, I got to leave. I said, there's nothing here for me. I, I want to sing. And again, my dad's idea of earning a living was not with music. And so my dad said to me, I'm, I wasn't going anywhere. He said, you're not going anywhere. And he slapped me. And, uh, you know, you couldn't talk back to your parents at that time. So <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever said anything back to him. And I said, Dad, uh, I have to leave. And he said to me, he said, well, if that's how you feel, you pack your clothes and you get out of here and don't come back. And um, I went into my room and... Uh, about a half an hour later, he came into the room and he said, what time is your bus leaving? And I said, um, it leaves at 10 o'clock tonight. So he said, well, I'm gonna drive you to the bus terminal. So all the way to the bus station, we didn't talk. And when I got out, he looked at me and he said, boy, you know, if things don't go right for you, you know you always have a home, you better come on back home. Good. And um, for, um, for a split second, I thought maybe, maybe I shouldn't go. And then uh, I heard this voice say, get on that bus. Yeah. Well, he just needed a second to process, yeah. kind of come to terms. So I went to New York. I got a job working as a dishwasher. But in my mind, I was on stage somewhere. And um, I, I remember one day a gentleman walked into the restaurant and it was in the winter, and I was mopping this floor, and he said, um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to track up your floor. And I said, don't worry about it. I'm not here. And he looked, he said, what do you mean you're not here? I said, just what I said. I'm not here. He said, well, where are you? I said, man, I'm on stage somewhere in front of thousands of people. <laughs> because I was already where I wanted to be. We got it. And thank you. We got I eventually like met, um, I met, some other guys that had the same vision as I had. And we formed a group called the Soul Brothers Six. And uh, I started writing songs. And a gentleman from Philadelphia happened to uh, come into the club where we were the house band. And, and he said, you guys are great. I want to record you. And he lived in Philadelphia. And um, he invited us to come to Philadelphia. And that, Going back to the story, it was my last night in Rochester, and I spent the night with this young lady, and I told her the next morning she was some kind of wonderful, and I said, I'm gonna write a song about you. So en route to Philadelphia, around Syracuse, she had packed me a lunch in this brown paper bag, and after I ate the sandwich, I started writing on the paper, I don't need a whole lot of money. And the reason I wrote, I don't need a lot of money, I was broke. <laughs> And I said, I don't need a big, fine car. The car that we were traveling in, you could look through the floor and see the highway. <laughs> and I said, I got everything I wanted. That was because of, I had this woman in my life. And um, we didn't get married. We were not in love. We were just in lust. So, <laughs> so that's how it went. And uh, I got to Philadelphia. We recorded some kind of wonderful. And uh, we got a, a recording contract with Atlantic Records. And as they say, the rest is history. Yeah. 
So they heard that song. It was that song it that was got that you song. the deal. They said this song and is a hit. you knew it was special then. Well, what happened, this yeah. guy that brought us to Philadelphia, he had a DJ who was a friend, and he invited him over to listen to us, and he wanted to know if the DJ thought we were any good. And the DJ heard I was practicing this song with the group. And he said, whose song is that? And I said, it's my song. I just wrote it. Yeah. And he said, that is a hit. Great, great, great. And he said, we're going to take you in the studio and record you. And so they took us in the studio. We recorded some kind of wonderful, and uh, it came out on Atlantic Records. Uh, a lot of people think I gave the song away, that I don't own the song. Yeah. The song has been recorded to date by 65 artists. Every time you hear that song, I'm the guy to go to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that part of it worked out for you. Yeah. John, I want to sit down and have a longer talk and hear this story in full. It's a fantastic sure. story, and thank you for sharing thank it you. with us. I want to say one more thing. Yes, sir. We have some good friends here from Canada. They're all the way from Saskatchewan. <laughs> Lillian and Jim, let's give them a great round of applause. Great. <laughs> It's you been be a well. pleasure, and we'll I hope see you, to again. See you again soon. Much love. John Ellison, everybody. Thank you, sir. A joy to have you. Well, well. Well, folks, I'm... what a night of music so far, huh? And story. Are you enjoying yourselves out there? Well, let's hear it for West Virginia. Well, we're going to close out our sets with an artist who never loses sight of the folk roots of country music. She's one of our greatest links from the old world to the Grand Ole Opry to modern day Americana. What a thrill it is to bring to the stage, Kathy Matea. Just uh, let us know if our professionalism is making us look too slick for all y'all. All right. Well, it has been, it's been uh, so much fun to listen to everybody else tonight and to get to revisit these songs live. And um, I'm sorry, I'm looking out there and there's someone who from the stage with blurry eyes in the dark looks just like Jimmy Dickens. Um, and it kind of took me back for a second because there's that one that doesn't move, but that one's moving and drinking. So I'm just saying. I thought this was water. All right, so when it came time to, do, uh, to, to pick a song to do, this is the one that I chose to do, and I, I, I just love it because it's so darn much fun. Did you ever sleep at the foot of the bed when the weather was whizzing cold? When the wind was whistling around the house and the moon was yellow as gold? To give you good warm mattress up to Aunt Lizzie and Uncle Fred. Too many kids folks on a bad night, so you went to the foot of the bed. I always tell all the old folks, ain't hey, the ain't leaving to grace. The teacher can keep me after school, I'd still have a smile. Foot of the bed. It was fine enough when the kin folks come and the kids brought brand new games. But I know God well when my time comes I was headed for the foot of the bed They say some folks don't know what it means To have company all over the place To rise up for cover on a winter's night With a big foot sitting on your face A cold tongue nails are scratching your back And the footboard is troubling your head I tell the world you ain't lost a thing Never sleeping at the foot of the bed Land of the brave and the free And in this 
Just play, go out on the road with this band and play swing music and listen to that fiddle and that steel every night. Also, I just have to say, <laughs> you're available. I have to say, I'm just so glad because I almost wore my orange pants tonight, and I'm just so glad that I didn't. It would have been a terrible disaster. It's like, you know, it takes a certain kind of confidence in yourself to look in the closet and go, yeah, the orange ones. That's right. That's what I need. Orange pants. That's gonna be. Look for me. <laughs> but I suppose if you play like that, you can wear any darn thing you want. So that's nice. Okay. Well, when it came time to decide what to sing tonight, uh, I knew so many people were coming in from West Virginia and tracing their roots back to West Virginia. And so I decided to sing a few songs that mean something to me about West Virginia that I've done over the years. And um, this is a song by Hazel Dickens, no relation. A lot of Dickenses back in West Virginia. And um, this is a song about having to move away. She had to move away to Baltimore to get a job when she was 17 years old. This is a song she wrote about being homesick. And a lot of us who've been on this stage tonight know that feeling. West Virginia. West Virginia's where I belong In the dead of the night In the still and the quiet I slip away like a bird in the flight Back to those hills The place that I call home It's been years now Since I left the This city Life's about God, the best of me. I can't remember why I left so free. What I wanted to do, what I wanted to see. But I can sure remember where I come from. West Virginia, oh my home. West Virginia.
quiet, I'd slip away like a bird in flight back to those hills, the place that I call home. Thank you, Jan. So we had a we had a big old induction ceremony years ago now. When we started the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame and we inducted Little Jimmy Dickens and we inducted Hazel Dickens and we inducted uh, also um, Billy Ed Wheeler and he wrote the next song I want to do for you. Um, I went and made this record about coal mining a few years ago and uh, both my grandfathers were coal miners and my dad got out of the mines. He didn't have to work in the mines. He went in the the chemical plants and made Agent Orange, but that's a whole other story. Mm. Orange pants. Orange pants. Yes, it's a theme. Orange. <laughs> but this is a song of Billy Ed's, and Billy Ed was, Billy Ed was, he's about 85 now. He was a little bit younger than Jimmy. But he was, like Jimmy, he could uh, make, us, make, you comp make you just break down and cry and make you fall out laughing. He did have one big hit uh, in the 60s called Ode to the Little Brown Shack Out Back, which was a song about the outhouse in his backyard. But this is a song he wrote that I recorded on that album, Cole, years ago, and uh, I think this is just a beautiful piece of writing. Singing with all his heart and soul He's got a blood red spot on his wing And all the rest of him's black as coal Of all the colors I ever did see Red and black are the ones I dread For when a man spills blood on the coal They carry him down from the coal mines Dead That's the feel-good hit of the summer, isn't it? It's good. You've been drinking beer all night. It's just nice. Do you want to kill yourself yet? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, <laughs> I did want to say, uh, um, this is Bill Cooley over here on uh, acoustic guitar. Yeah. 
who's played with me, well, let's just say we've played together for a long time. And uh, I don't know if I'd know how to play without Bill standing on stage next to me. Um, so we thought we'd end with a, a little song that a lot of people know uh, about West Virginia. This was written by Utah Phillips. Uh, lots of people have done it. When I was a kid and I just got my guitar and was learning to play, I heard Emmy Lou Harris sing this song. And then years later, I got to go sing it with her on the stage of the Ramen Auditorium. And I thought, okay, that's a bucket list thing, man. That is a bucket list thing. And I was telling them yesterday during rehearsal that during the instrumental, Emmy Lou dances across the stage to me. And I'm like, she's coming. Here she comes. What's she going to do? And she says, nice boots. Dances back over to her microphone. Like, Emily Harris likes my clothes, man. It was good. So this is a good one to um, sing along with, if you know it. Oh, the green rolling hills of West Virginia Are the nearest thing to heaven that I know Though the times are sad and dreary And I cannot linger here They'll keep me and never let me go My daddy said don't ever be Kathy Matea, everybody.
Thank you so much, Kathy. Wow. Yes. Kathy Matea. It's wonderful. Now, folks, don't go away because we're uh, going to converge up here and, and have a little jam here. So, uh, We've had it. But first, some uh, words of wisdom from That's Keith me. Bilbrey. My words <laughs> of wisdom tonight, happy birthday, Jim Lauderdale. There yeah. you go. Sure Want to say in here. Yeah, thanks, Jim. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Want to say thanks to Fender Amplification and Shure Microphones for their support with some of the gear we use to produce this fine sound. And, of course, to Dex Imaging for the equipment used to print your show programs. Keep it as a souvenir. It was a special night. How about it, Greg? It was a special night. Absolutely. And uh, you've been listening to it all on uh, 89.5 WMOT, Murfreesboro, Nashville. We appreciate the partnership with them. We hope you'll tune in and enjoy Americana Roots music around the clock. And, uh, you know, they, little Jimmy liked to say that he was uh, Willie Nelson after taxes. It reminds me this weekend is April 15th, so everybody yeah. will all be somebody after Thanks taxes. Thanks for reminding me. I was really uh, enjoying next, tonight. The next time we gather together. And the next time we do gather together is going to be May 16th, uh, Wednesday, May 16th. We're going to be at, uh, back at the Nashville City Winery and carrying mm -hmm. roots on the road. We've been a little circle. We had a really good time there. Classy venue. And we're going to be joined by the Travelin' McCurries, believe it or not, Nora Jane Struthers, Emma Hearn, and Joe Mullins and the Radio Ramblers, one of the best bluegrass bands in the business. And uh, the tickets will be on sale at musiccityroots.com. So the Roots on the Road goes, goes on. But we want to say thanks to all the artists tonight on the Yeehaw Brewing lineup. The Carpenter Ants, John Ellison, Todd Burge, Connie Smith, Tim O'Brien, and Kathy Matea. One yeah. big round of applause for all of them. Yeah. Yeah. That is an exceptional lineup. I really haven't looked forward to a lineup as much in a long time. I mean, Connie Smith gives me the chills if she just says a few words. But to sing Amazing Grace uh, and Ooh. once a day right here, right yeah. now. That's, uh, I'm still we were, shaking that off. We were standing over here in reverence, being very silent. Indeed, I indeed. remember that. I will not forget that for a while. Well, it looks like everybody's about to be ready for the final jam, brought to you by the Yeehaw Brewing Company. Everybody say Yeehaw. Can I hear it? Yeehaw! Very good. Right on cue. Now, if we can only get you-know-who to be right on cue, Jim well, Lauderdale. Look at the number of people he has to coordinate. I but, love this. But the poise, the professionalism, it's oh, yes. overwhelming. It just oozes off the stage. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it does. I hope it translates to radio. Yeah, there this, you go. This awkward silence. This folks, folks listening in the uh, just don't realize what all is going on. Uh, this is creativity at its finest, live on stage yeah. at the Nashville Palace. It's going to be a wall of sound here any, any time. Did you get your picture made with little Jimmy back there, by the way? We I actually went to the, the Wax Museum a couple of weeks ago uh -huh. uh, for fun with, with, with my friend Tommy Womack. Uh -huh. I thought that would be a great person to see a Wax Museum. I can't think of anybody of better. Music. And we had a good time, and we're going to do that on the radio in the coming weeks. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. We have an but actual we, wax of figure the... of, uh, I don't know what year that was, of little Jimmy Dickens. Very lifelike. Larry Nager's back there having, <laughs> having his picture made with little Jimmy right now. But, I mean, it, you know, wax figures have always kind of freaked me out a little bit because they look so real. They call it the uncanny valley. Yes. That's the term. And boy, and little Jimmy's back there in all his glory with his nudie suit and uh, good stuff. He is among the best. The mini pearl is uncanny. They really got mini pearl. Oh, really? The Bob Dylan, we agreed, not mm -hmm. so much. Kind of lay there. Kind of yeah. looked a little funny. How do I look down there? I, I they, hope they make a wax they, figure they of you and Madame Tussauds, Keith Bilbrey. They should. <laughs> well, that's true. And they should have one of our host, <laughs> Jim Lauderdale. Jim, are you in the wax museum yet? Uh, no, I just um, look that way. <laughs> uh, hey, it's a pleasure to work with you again. Big hand for Jim Lauderdale, take ladies it away, and gentlemen. Jim. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. I've had a great time. Have you folks? It's really been wonderful. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn things over to uh, uh, one of our featured artists tonight and uh, the band leader. And um, he came up with this idea to do this song as our jam, and I think it was an excellent idea, and I'm going to get him to kick things off. Uh, All right. Jim, thank you so much, and we're going to do one of Jimmy Dickens' big hits, Hillbilly Fever's Going Down. All right? All right. Come on, two, three, four, one, two, three. 
City Roots on the road, and y'all take good care, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. What a night at the Nashville Palace, our tribute to little Jimmy Dickens and the state of West Virginia. Music City Roots is a production of Hang Die Media. Don't forget to tune in to 89.5 WMOT Roots Radio tonight on your way home. And if you're already listening on the radio, don't touch that dial. I'm Keith Bilbrey. And from the Nashville Palace, right here on the edge of Music City, good night, everybody. Hang on.